Well, welcome to another episode of, or class of, Home Chef Workshop. Today, we have Marlene all the way in Boston, going to help us learn how to make a sage butter cod, steamed broccoli and carrots, and to start off a wonderful silky butternut squash soup. So, without further ado, over to you, Marlene. Hi there, Marilyn and everyone else. And uh, well, welcome to Home Chef Workshop. And as Marilyn said, today we are going to do a sage butter cod, uh, butternut squash soup, and steamed broccoli and carrots. All very healthy and very yummy. So um, first off, I hope you have your mise en place. And uh, that means your ingredients and uh, everything that you're going to be using for this cooking show all uh, in place because um, we are gonna start right now. We are gonna start off with um, uh, the squash, uh, the squash soup. So we're gonna be chopping onions. We are also going to uh, crush some garlic, and and then we're gonna proceed from there. Okay, so let's start off with our prep. Now, we, it calls for a medium-sized onion, and I actually have a large onion here. So prep camera, please, Marilyn. So what we're gonna do first is just um, slice the onions. Just, you wanna remove the tips just to create a stable base, and then slice it in the middle, and then you can start peeling. Anytime you're handling uh, knives, uh, or sharp objects, whatever it is you're cutting or slicing, you wanna make sure it's stable so that you don't have any slippage. Now, since our recipe calls for only um, a medium-sized onion, and as I said, this is a little bit large, I'm just gonna use three-fourths of this. Okay, so just roughly slice. We're gonna be pureeing the soup, so it doesn't matter if it's you know not so even. That's pretty much fine, and I'll just do half of this. Okay, Let me interrupt like you for a minute, Marlene, just to say if anybody wants to hone in on their knife skills, we have a wonderful video on that in our website under the resources link. So oh, yes. Great, great. And then um, the next thing I'm going to do is the garlic. I always like using a pestle and mortar just because, um, well, aside from looking beautiful, this is made of granite, I think. It's also really easy. So all I do is I just like, just do boom, you know, and then it cracks the skin, makes it super easy to peel. See, so just, just like that. And then I'll just clean up later on. But if you don't have a pestle and mortar, you can just as easily do it with a knife. And so you, all you do is just with a flat side of the knife, just go hit it that way and it cracks it. And again you have the same thing okay so i'm just going to do the rest of um the garlic with the pestle and mortar because that's my favorite way to do it so however way you want to do it four cloves of garlic let's peel it all together and then we're gonna uh slice it thinly if you don't have a pestle and mortar but if you have a pestle and mortar we'll crush it okay so that's it this was pretty fast. And I tend to have a little container. It's always kind of nice to have a container on the side where you can just put all your compostable materials. Uh, if you haven't composted yet, it's a pretty good thing to do. Um, I think I read a statistic somewhere where 15% of, um, of uh, garbage can actually be composted. So that's a lot of garbage that you are saving from the landfill if you're able to do this. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just trimming off the yucky edges, you know, anything that looks like it's blemished, um, and also the green parts. Of course, they're all edible, but I just kind of like to do that. All right, I have my four garlic. I'm going to crush it in my pestle and mortar. Meanwhile, Let's preheat the oven to 425 degrees. So we'll give it some time. So don't forget, let's do our oven 
425. Make sure you have a rack um, somewhere near the top, okay? And uh, that's for the fish. And it will take the it'll take the oven maybe 10 minutes to preheat. So it's a good idea to do it now. So let's also um, let's start the fire on the stove. So let's keep it on. Let's turn on the fire and put it on maybe medium heat. Let me show you what medium heat looks like. Um, this is uh, camera one. That's pretty much, I'll, I'll lower it just so you can see. So that's about medium, okay? So we're gonna be starting the soup and let's pour some of our EVOO and uh, maybe about two tablespoons of oil. Just slide it around so that you can hold the bottom. So notice everyone how Marlene is just eyeballing that measurement, but if you are not very comfortable with eyeballing, go ahead and use your measuring spoons. Okay, and then just dump your onions in. It, you know, you don't really have to wait for it to be so hot at this point. You can just put that in, and while that's heating up, we are going to slice our squash. So we're back to our um prep and so i just have here a um, un already peeled squash and we're just going to be roughly chopping it so that they're evenly sized and they can cook at the same pace so maybe about an inch about an inch uh, wide just like that and then we're going to further slice them so that they're also about an inch. So, okay. Aha, I hear the onions. Of our yes, I'm, I'm just going to switch over there just to see how they're doing. Yeah. All right, let's just do that. And then I'm also going to put the dash of salt. It's always a good idea when you're um, when you're sauteing onions. You want to saute them um, and draw out the the moisture. So you add a little bit of salt at this a at this stage, and that's what happens. It draws out the moisture. It cooks faster. And when you're, uh, we're not going to be caramelizing uh, this uh, this time this onions. But if you are caramelizing, that's an especially good way to do it because it also promotes browning. Okay, can you hear the sizzle at this point? No, sizzle is not very clear. Oh, wow, here, and the camera. Can you hear ah, that now? Very there good go. sizzle. See? <laughs> the camera has the audio, so that works out. All right, I'm still chopping the um, squash. While you're chopping, I also want to point out that we have a vocabulary list in the resources section of our website. So things like caramelizing, which means to brown the, to, to create some browning in your cooking, uh, they're found in the, in the website under the vocabulary list. So go check that out. Okay, thank you, Marilyn. So um, it, the, the reason why I'm getting the squash to around an inch cube is, um, one is, of course, you want them to cook evenly. Uh, but secondly, you don't want them so large that it'll take so long to soften. We're not going to be cooking this completely through, just soft enough so that uh, we can puree it because this is what's going to be our soup. So, all right. I think that's pretty much all evenly sized. Oh, are you seeing the prep? Yes, we. I just switched to you. Just oh, for a bit sorry, of press to your face and how wonderful you're looking and how <laughs> happily away you're chopping. <laughs> All right, look at that. See, a sneaky big one. I'm going to like slice that up to make it a little one. bit more like the others. Also, because I'm wasting time because I'm waiting for the onions. All right, that's I think pretty much. In the meantime, let's see how you look in that gorgeous outfit of apron and paisley. <laughs> 
All right. I am now going to add my garlic. Let me show you my garlic. It's, yours should look pretty much like this. I'm looking at the prep, so pretty much crushed. Again, this is all going to be pureed, but you know, I like crushing it because it releases all the juices, all the garlicness comes out, and I love garlic. And again, although this is only four cloves of garlic, if you want it stronger, you can add more, and if you want it weaker, you can add less. So I'm now putting the garlic in. So we're back to the stove. We're on stove now. There we go. So thing, so thing. Now you saute the garlic for maybe one to two minutes. Um, you're gonna smell this. You don't want it to to be really, really brown. Just like a little bit cooked so that you get the rawness out. And then we're gonna be adding the squash. So about a minute is pretty much pretty much okay. Now I'm gonna add the squash. Here we go. And we're gonna cook that for a little bit, just so it uh, develops a little bit of uh, caramelization as well. Because vegetables have sugars. All right, there we go. Let's put the whole thing in. So let's do that. Just for maybe a minute or two. Get your chicken broth or vegetable broth or whatever broth you want to use or stock ready. I'm shaking, shaking, shaking because that's going to happen soon. But since that's still cooking and I want to give it maybe one or two more minutes, I might as well start on the broccoli and the carrots. Uh, recipe calls for a medium head of broccoli. And the carrots, two medium size, and this is, these are kind of like really thin carrots, so I figured let's use three, right? So, um, look, it looks like we don't have to peel this. Okay, I generally don't like to peel carrots um, if they're organic because all the nutrients are in the skin, but if uh, for some reason there are some rotting areas or if it's not organic, then yeah, go and, go and peel it, okay? But, Looks like these are organic and they're pretty good. So I'm just gonna cut up the ants and then we're gonna chop it. Okay, so let's go back to prep and let's do, and by the way, we're doing this because we're prepping for the steamed broccoli and carrots uh, vegetable dish. You know, when we're cooking a menu, we're basically doing everything at the same time. So. Normally, I don't really like multitasking, but in cooking, if you want to cook a whole meal, it's usually practical to do so. So, uh, for the carrots, bite-sized pieces, say about three-fourths of an inch, will be sufficient, so maybe like that. And of course, my carrots are going all over the place, in a row. But it's okay. I'm gonna find them all. Ah! <laughs> and what happened? It rolled. We and lost some carrots there. See, these guys happen. These things happen. Don't toss it away. Wash it. Okay. We are all about making sure we don't waste stuff. Okay, my carrots are done. And you know what? I think our Squash can now have some stock. So let's get our four cups of stock, which is generally one box. Okay, the 32 ounces, which is four cups. And so just pour the whole thing in. Woohoo! There we go. So when we do this, all the little brown bits also, the fond, all of them gets to, you know, it's easier to scrape them from the bottom when you have liquid. There we go. So let's just put enough stock for now to, we're gonna use the whole box, but um, let's, because you know, we, we don't want it to take so long to eat. So let's just use enough to submerge the squash and then we'll put the rest in later when, 
we finish off the soup. And then I'm gonna cover this to trap the heat in, just makes it a little bit faster to cook. And then I'm gonna move this, well actually, I can just keep it there. Okay, so we were doing our carrots and broccoli. Okay, so at this point, let me just show you. We're in the prep area now. So I have a saucepan and a steamer inside, okay? So all we're gonna do is just pop the carrots and the broccoli when we slice them, which we haven't done yet, but just pop it in. And make sure that there's water, maybe about um, an inch, just enough so that uh, it doesn't dry out, but you don't, it's, it's gonna steam. You're not like bracing or boiling, so there's no water that you can see that's covering the carrots. So it's just pretty much three fourths to an inch uh, high. So I'm gonna do the broccoli now. Here's our broccoli. Oh, look at that. They thought they could hide from me. No. Nope. <laughs> Got ya. Okay, right, here's our broccoli. I'm gonna cut the stems off, but I'm not gonna toss these stems because we like to make our own stock here. And these guys, the trimmings of vegetables and stuff, they're, they're actually excellent to put in your stock. So I just put them in a plastic bag and I freeze them until when I use the stock. So I'm just gonna put it in my compost pile first as a holding thing and I'm just gonna clean it up later. Now, your broccoli, you just want to chop them up uh, the way you would like to see them on your plate, which is pretty much like in little florets like this. So let's just go straight in the center. Now the stalks, uh, the stalks of course are edible, but they're chewier than the rest of the florets. So I tend to use that also for stock. So I'm just gonna trim them away as well. So how's everything in Hong Kong, Marilyn? Oh, well, it's a bit rainy today. Oh. Yes, uh, a little dreary, but, uh, but but as long as we've got uh, we we we've got cheeriness in our heart, we can always overcome the overcome the sacrifice. <laughs> right. And you know what? Uh, rainy weather, snowy weather. It's oh, very nice time to cook actually. Absolutely great cooking weather. Look at this. I'm going to put now my broccoli in. And these guys are just going to steam for maybe 10, 15 minutes. It's one of those things that you just want to look at it uh, to see whether it's, it's already uh, completely steamed. And um, Marlene, we have a no? Marlene, we have a question yes. about whether the vegetables should be popped in when the water is hot or is it all cooking at the same time bringing the heat up and then the vegetables oh. at the same time you know what it was cold water that's just tap water i i had put in so it you know we're basically starting it from uh cold and then 10 to 15 minutes from cold all the way to steam steam ready uh, the way you would know this, because you don't like to oversteam your vegetables, so um, you also want to cut them up in pretty much the same size. But you want to um, make sure that when you when you uh, prick it with a fork, that it's just tender enough. It just like pokes a little bit, but it's not going to be mushy. Uh, and 10 to 15 minutes, you'll see that that's pretty much what's going to happen. And that's going to be the same for both the carrots and the broccoli. Okay, so I'm putting this in the stove as well, turning up the heat. Um, let's put this back here. Actually, I'm gonna put it here. And let's do this. I've just got everybody looking at the butternut squash while it's cooking. And back to you here. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna put this behind because we're gonna use the front stove. So let's put that. Yeah, and then we'll just forget about that. That's pretty easy. All right, now we are gonna do something interesting. See, the two things we have to do are the fish and 
the sage butter sauce. So let me start off with the fish. But here's where it gets very interesting. Our recipe today calls for a codfish loin. And loins are the thickest part of the fish. Unfortunately, our market didn't have it. So, so you actually just have cod fillets. And I had cut them so that the thick parts are separate from the thin parts. Why did I do that? Because ta -da, they're not going to cook evenly if you cook them all together. So what I'm going to do today um, is show you how to cook it when it's thick. Basically, this is like a cod loin. It's, this is about an inch thick. But uh, really, the cod loins are about one and a half. They're one and a half inches. They're even thicker. But how we're going to cook this is going to be a little bit different from the flat one. So if you, if you already have your cod loins, follow how we're going to do it this way, okay? Which means we are going to be pan frying this and then finishing it in the oven. That's for the fat, fat parts, right? Now, for the thin fish like this, you don't need to oven finish this. This one we will just pan fry. So you're actually gonna get a twofer for today. I'm gonna show you two ways to cook them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, did not anticipate it, but you know this is what happens. You go to the market and sometimes the things you want are like super expensive and something else is on sale that's nice, but not quite yet. You know what? Why not substitute? Or, or today. Or or plain not available, like in your case. Or in my case, no cod loin. And you should have seen the fishmonger. It was like, well, that's what you get. You get what you take. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Fine. We will just work with it. So we are going to salt and pepper our fish. So here we go. I'm going to wash it a little bit of my hands. Marlene, you can't hear it, but we've got lots of laughter from our audience. <laughs> yes. Well, Hey, cooking is fun, right? <laughs> so what we're going to do is, but really, you should have seen the uh, fishmonger. He was just such a curmudgeon. But anyway, <laughs> we're going to salt our fish. So I'm salting, salting. We're going to rub this in too, but right now I'm just like salting. So we have a question that they noticed that uh, you're not measuring the salt. It, can, they, can they even over-salt the fish? Is that even possible? Uh... It's always possible. Everything's possible. <laughs> so um, I would say, uh, well, some of this will be burning off anyway when you're searing it. So it's always better to use less because it's it's always easy to add more salt or more pepper later on. Um, so I guess if just as an estimate, I had put maybe uh, one and a half teaspoons of salt for all of for all of this, including the back. I'm gonna do that too. Uh, and again, better to do less than over salt because you can always adjust later. But it's not an exact thing. Cooking, why cooking is amazing is because there's a lot of give for uh, mistakes. Well, actually, they're not really mistakes, but anything that you do, oh, pretty much you can counteract somehow and you can adjust later. Not so much like baking where you have to be precise. But here, see? So I'm just salting again the back side and then peppering as well. Okay, that's pretty much ready. I forgot to mention, um, I had washed the fish first and it's in the recipe, but uh, wash your fish and pat dry with a towel. You want the fish to be dry before you salt it or cook it because all that excess moisture if you did not wipe it down, it's going to be creating a steam when you cook it rather than a nice brown uh, browning, which happens when, when it's basically just the oil and the fish rather than lots of water. Okay, so make sure that it's dry. So now let's check on our squash soup. Just to see, I just don't want to, it's always good to see where we are. Such steam that just poofed out. Yeah, you saw that, right? Okay, you know what? We can probably, I'll let oh. this cool now. I'll just That's turn this off because you see, pretty much I can poke, I'll, I'll show you. Can you see? 
Yes, I think that's yeah. very, oh, that's very clear yeah. that the so, whole is going through very easily. Yeah, we're not cooking it completely. We're just softening it up and we just browned it a little bit so we can have some of the caramelization. So now we turn it off the heat because you want this to cool down. I don't want to put this in the uh, blender until it's a little bit cooler, okay? Because, uh, well, depending on the blender you have, if you have glass, it's probably okay. But still, you know, um, better be safe than not. There we go. So that's pretty much. You know, when I was a beginning cook, Marlene, I put the whole lot in the blender while it was still hot, and the and the blender exploded on me. It was a big mess to clean up. Needless to say. Did you get burned? No, the walls were splattered with orange. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah. Wow. Well, well the like cleanup my... must have been. The cleanup will teach you not to do it again. <laughs> I I would think, right? It looked like I had a very angry two-year-old. <laughs> okay, here we go. So what we're going to do? Um, usually, if we had um, really thick cod loins, which would take a little bit longer to cook, I would start that off. And then I would do the sage butter. But because these are actually thin cuts, I think we should, we'll just start with the sage butter. So the sage butter sauce, you're gonna need a small skillet or a saucepan, so maybe like this. Um, half a stick of butter and about eight leaves of sage. I actually love sage, so. I probably have 10 here. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is just put in the heat and we are gonna start off with this. Okay, just realize I have a few things that should go away. Uh, all right, since that's cool now, here we go. I just wanted so, you to know that we're getting, we got a compliment from one of the viewers on, on adopting your technique of crisping the sage and uh, oh. she used it as a garnish in one of her meals recently. Oh, okay, yes. So, let, good you mentioned that. I, let me talk a bit about this. Um, the sage butter sauce, all we're gonna do is we're gonna be browning the butter. When you brown the butter, it becomes sweeter and nuttier. And believe me, your house will smell amazing. The, the smell of browning butter is, I don't know, it's just so heavenly. Now, sage is just an amazing, combination because when you when you fry the sage in the butter uh, you're basically infusing the flavors of the sage but you're also crisping you're frying the sage so the fried sage in itself is pretty delicious it's not just a garnish it's actually something you will love to eat okay now here's you what you just want to remember when you're when you're um, working with butter make sure you watch it because butter can burn very easily so you want your heat pretty much at low and since we're cooking for four people i'm probably just going to use half a stick of butter which is four tablespoons okay that's what that is so turn on your heat to low and then let's put in our butter okay i'm going to use a new knife because my knife is used for the fish so let's just do this. All right, so just put it in the pan. Now sometimes I, I do more than that just because sage butter is one of those things that you can not only use for the squash soup, but you can uh, use it as a topping for all sorts of dishes. Actually, we're not using it for the squash soup today. We're using it for the, for the uh, cod but an alternative to the squash soup we're doing today today's squash soup will be finished with maple syrup and um and toasted pecans but really a second version is you finish it off with the sage butter sauce so it works that way too all right so let's just kind of so i noticed when you cut the butter you eyeballed about half a stick is that right well, half a stick is four tablespoons. A stick is eight tablespoons. So this is exactly four tablespoons. There we go. And you know what? 
we can just add the sage already in and then see I'm I have a bunch of sage I have a bunch of sage here um, I'm just gonna separate them because it would be better to have them separate okay Ooh, I can hear it already Okay, I'm gonna put the uh, the camera with the audio just so you can hear a little bit. Can you hear? Yes. Or maybe not so. It's a wow. little bit of a sizzle. Okay, yes, so it's a sizzle. There you go. Oh, look at that. That looks clear. Oh, look at that. That shouldn't be floating on top. Go away. Okay, I'm just gonna pull that out. <laughs> Don't do this at home. You might burn yourself. Ah, there you go. Okay, so there we go. Just watch that. Don't let that burn. Okay. So that's cooking, and oh, sorry, we'll go back to our prep. All right, so now let's turn on the heat on the stove for one of the pans. So as I said, we are gonna do two ways of um, making our, our um, cob today. We are gonna pan fry uh, one, the, the thinner one, we are gonna pan fry all the way. And then the second one, we are gonna pan fry and then oven finish, okay? So let's start with the one that we are pan frying. Let's see. All right. All right, all we're gonna do is, again, Add EBOO, that's extra virgin olive oil. And we're talking about two tablespoons. Just again, enough to coat the pan. So this is, again, if you have a thin cut, this is what we're gonna do, okay? Is it possible, Marlene, to just straighten out the stove camera? I'm sorry, to what? To straighten out the stove camera. Like that? Yes, that's better. What here? We're gonna do multitasking. Actually, I think we're gonna we're gonna pan fry both of them already. Mike is sure. Here's the heat. I don't know. Can you see the heat? Oh, not so much. This one. Um, well, I'm gonna put this on medium high. Or just medium, medium, and then the one for the, for the thicker pad. Okay, let's do this. Well, actually, I'll just do one first. All right, so just wait for it to heat up a bit. Now, how do you know your oil is heated? You want to see a little bit of the shimmering uh, oil. That means it's hot. And Marilyn's method is to, to do this, and then you can kind of feel the heat. But if you don't know what you're looking for, that might be a bit difficult. That's a little bit of experience. But you can see, I'll show you when it's a little bit uh, hot, what, what the shimmery oil looks like. But that's your way of finding out that it's... One, one participant is, is asking, they're, they're seeing a kind of like a rippling effect. Is that, is that what you're looking for? That's exactly what I mean, the rippling effect. You know, it's like when you see, when it's, when it's a hot, hot day, and you see how the sun hits the asphalt, um, and it shimmers, it sort of looks like that. Okay, so, let's see, is it that way already? Well, uh, it's a thick skillet, so, you know, the thicker your skillet, the longer it will take for the oil to heat up, but then, once it's heated, then it's gonna be pretty good. So, Meanwhile, I'm just watching my butter, which is sizzling nicely. Okay, everyone, we're nearly at the halfway mark of this session, so I hope you're following along and doing as Marlene is doing. Okay, let's see. It should be... Yeah, wondering how everyone is following. I'm gonna move the sage butter to another area. 
so I can cook here. Because I have a I have a stove that doesn't seem to be working now. So there we go. Then you can see, can you see? Well, you'll see the I'll show you the, how the whole stove looks like. There's the sage butter. Then the copper one, that's your uh, steaming broccoli and carrots. And then we're waiting for the squash to cool down. So this is indeed multitasking. And then check out how the broccoli looks. You see how nice and bright green it is? Oh, that is terrific bright green. Yeah, it's still a little bit um, too uh, hard for my taste. So I'm just gonna do that a little bit more. Let's put that for seven minutes. I'm using a timer just so I don't forget. All right. So while you're while you're in the waiting mode, I just like to add to the, our audience that when vegetables go from a bright green to a dull green, you know you've overcooked them. Sorry, when it goes what? From a bright green to a kind of yellowy or dull green. Yes. You know you've yes. Them. Exactly. All right. Our uh, skillet is already hot, and let me show you what it looks like. Can you see? Uh, let's see. Yes. The shimmery a little bit? Yes. Okay, so hot enough. Okay, so I'm going to be putting the thin ones in that one. And meanwhile, I have another skillet that I'm already heating up for the thick ones because we're going to be doing them all together. So let me just put oil on that as well. Okay, I'll just show you where that is. That's. That's that one that I'm also working out. Okay, so that's for the thicker one. So let's go back to this, and now let me put the fish in. <laughs> yes, we can hear that sizzle nicely. Yeah, you, you can hear that. Uh -oh. Whoa. And just in case, for those of you who are worried about splattering, uh, it's a normal occurrence if your fish is at a different temperature, a very cold temperature to the hot oil, that splatter will occur. So just keep a cover nearby and uh, protect yourself from that. But as soon as the temperatures even out between the fish and the oil, the splattering will disappear. Okay. Um, so what's happening, if we're just pan frying this, this is pretty much easy. This is just salt and pepper, and your flavor for this is really going to come from your sage butter. So um, when you have pins up and repeating it, this is the best way to do it. And we're going to work now on the thicker cut, which is not quite the cod loin, but it's a thicker part of the fish. Okay, so here I'm going to show you another camera view, but... It's already shimmering. That's a little bit clearer, actually, the shimmering. So I'm gonna put the cod here. Can you hear that? Yes. Okay. So now for, for the thicker cut of cod, what we're gonna do is uh, we are gonna cook each side for a few minutes. Um, I'm just gauging for this thickness maybe three minutes each side, and then we're gonna finish it in the oven. The reason we are finishing in the oven is so that uh, you are able to cook the, the middle part without overcooking the exterior portion. So that's the reason for the oven finish. And that's a secret to a lot of restaurants cook fish, and that's what they do. The, it's perfectly cooked inside and out because they pan fry and then they finish it in the oven. So that's happening our fish is happening check on the butter 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 but it's getting brown but not yet that brown. In there. but you can see that the face leaves are already like crunchy which means that's pretty much fried I'm just leaving it there then all right, so just so for our viewers, the sage butter is, is uh, developing some froth at the top. Those are the milk solids. All right, and we said that we are multitasking, so 
Since we're just waiting, I am gonna quarter an on a, a, a lemon because um, this is optional, but I always like putting something uh, citrusy or acidic to finish the fish and lemon, capers, they all work out. So I'm just gonna quarter this. Okay, everyone, we're at, uh, we've got 15 minutes left on this class. So we're getting close to the finish line. Actually, let me uh, revise what I said. Instead of quartering it, let's quarter a hat. So basically it's one eighth, that's a nicer choice. So each one can be for, you know, for every serving gets one eighth of a, of a lemon. All right, let's, uh, Check on the fish. Let's see. Uh, I know where this one so. Yes, yeah, just straighten out the video on the fish. Yeah. Well, we have two fish. This is a bonus. <laughs> okay, so, so that's that. the that's the fillet we're looking at, right? This is the fin they're both fillets, but this is the thin one. And oh this yes, is the thin one. And that's the, and that's the thick one. Yes, it's interesting okay. how the fillet, the thick fillet, looks kind of like a loin. Yeah, it is. This is all actually. This was uh, two pieces of um, fish. I cut off the thick parts, but the loin is even thicker than that. The, the loins, at least, I've been getting are one and a half inches thick. This is about an inch thick. So what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to turn it over because we're just pretty much cooking each side. Looks like I'll need help. There we go. And then this one. You see it's already... I'm going to show you. It's already flaky, the top. That means that's cooked. So, yes, for those of you who um, are maybe having a hard time turning your fish, it's good if you're beginning to start off with a non-stick skillet. Um... Uh, I have something to say about that. Um, if you want to develop browning or crusting, you want uh, definitely a, 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 you don't want a nonstick skillet, that's what I wanted to say. So, and in this case, I. What I do with the, the thin ones? What I'm doing is just like, Turning them over. Yes. See? Yeah, this is gonna this cook really fast. Yeah, that's already pretty much going. Just maybe two more minutes and then this is done. Meanwhile, turn off the heat of the thicker one. So I'm just gonna show you this. I'm gonna put this in the oven. Here, I'm actually camera uh one uh, camera camera one, I'll show you. That's wow. what it looks like. It's pretty much cooked. I'm just putting wow. it in the oven for the middle part because the, the center portion, let's see if you can see it. Um, I can see it from my angle, but it's, you can see it's still not cooked inside in the middle. Well, but the outer part is, see? Can, so, I, can I recommend you show them with a fork perhaps, then they can see that it's somewhat okay. difficult to, to press the fork in. Uh, you're chopping or I, I did hear what you said but anyway what we're gonna do is we're just gonna stick that in the oven okay so let me just return my camera back and make sure you are using an oven proof skillet <laughs> now as I said this this particular uh, um, uh, fillet which is not as thick as I would have wanted um, since, since it's not that thick, we're not going to bake it that long. We'll just give it maybe four minutes, four or five minutes. Always estimate. Now, I'm just checking on our butter sauce. Butter sauce is still 
fine. And let's check on everything. Let's check on our oops, broccoli. Oh, you know what? Still not a standard statement. So we'll just keep that on. All right, let's work on our soup because I think our soup is pretty much uh, ready to puree. So let's get our, so get your blenders guys and um, um, turn off already the heat on the thin cod because if you were using that because um, if you were, if you had thin cuts of cod, although that's the bonus for today, just because that's gonna overcook and really, you want to transfer that to a plate, which, you know what, maybe I'll do that now. Because if you overcook it, it's just going to break apart. So let me just put that all in the food. So this is Marlene transferring those fillets, which will probably cook a little faster than a loin, would you say? Oh, totally. Much faster because it's very thin. So that's what I was uh, saying uh, for thin cuts. Uh, pan frying is the fastest and easiest way to do it. So I'll just set this aside. We actually don't need this. All that browning in the skillet. I'm sorry? I said we can see all that browning the skillet. Oh, away. yes, yes. Okay, so now we are going to go to the squash. So all I'm going to do is just put it in a blender. Don't forget we're going to be adding some milk. I actually just made fresh almond milk today. And so we are gonna use almond milk. Although, um, let's see. There's some lovely steam coming out of that pot. Um, you can use any kind of milk you like. I like almond milk because I'm reducing some of the dairy in our household and I like making it because it's very yummy. So I'm getting all the bits, because all those bits of, of garlic and onion that you, that you puree obviously becomes um, your soup and it's, it, all the flavor is pretty much just imparted. So I'm just getting every bit and then I'm gonna for the rest, okay, let's see. You see, the reason why I didn't use all the stock already, I'm up to here. And your capacity for the blender is, there's a line usually, but mine is up to here. And if I had used all the stock immediately, it would have been too much. So I'm just gonna add the rest of the stock later. So right now, this is all I'm working on, whatever's in the stock pot, let's pour the rest of it. That's a lovely view. We have a, your work, your work top. <laughs> oh, work top there. Oh, and here I get to move my little roller thing. So, see, I have enough headroom, and all I'm gonna do is puree. It makes an amazing gurgling sound from from over here. So you see everyone how Marlene is releasing the steam and pressure of the heat from the blender. So that it just explodes like it did on me. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now you notice I was releasing some of the steam here. Just a good idea because it creates pressure and you don't want it to Pop. This is this is a really good blender and it's all very secure. But still, I always think it's a good idea to kind of release the steam just in case. Now, just pour this back into your stock pot. Oh, 
Oh my goodness, it looks so creamy already, even without yes. any milk. Yeah. But we're gonna add some of our milk, as I said. So take out your milk, we're gonna be using about three fourths cup. Again, no exact science, you can actually, uh, you can use more or less. And of course, if you want to adjust um, your texture to be thicker or thinner, well, to make it thinner, just uh, add more liquid. So I'm just gonna add about three fourths cup of, of um, milk. And then put the heat back on. So, let's see. This is the, see the texture? Mm -hmm. I actually like it like that. So I'll, I'll show you another uh, view. Here's the uh, camera one. So it's an easy pouring consistency. Yes. And of course, if you, if you want it really thick, don't put as much liquid, okay? You know what? I might not, I think I li I'll taste this also. Because remember, we still have a little bit more stock. So we can check whether that's fine. Let's see. Hmm, you know what? I don't need to add the rest of the stock, so I'll just keep it as is. And then now you need to salt and pepper according to your flavor profile. I want more salt because I haven't really salted it. And of course, pepper. And then we're gonna add our, our maple syrup. Mm, that's getting tastier. So I am guessing from what I had just put in, because this is salt and pepper to taste, I had put in about a teaspoon maybe of salt. Mm, okay, all right. Now, maple syrup. So, um, I have a big bottle here. But we're <laughs> probably just gonna put, I'm gonna eyeball, again, this is one of those things you go by flavor. How much, how much uh, sweetness would you like to add to your um, to your squash, right? So I will put about a third of a cup. Let's see how that goes. Ooh, that's actually perfect. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, just a warning everyone, we have seven minutes to go. You should be tasting your cooked products like Marlene is doing. Yeah, she's just tasting your soup and balancing the flavors. All right, so what's happening? Um, we are warming the soup, but that's all ready to go. Let's check on our sage. Our sage is pretty much brown. So, Ooh, that looks really nice and amber. There, see? So I still like it a little bit browner. So you know what? I'm going to just leave that be. Let's remove the fish because I have a feeling the fish is already done. And let's get my mitts. Don't forget, your skillet's going to be really hot. So use your mitts. Okay, let's see. Let's see, let's see. Actually, I'm still on stove top. Okay, that is cooked. I'm gonna put it closer. Can you see? Yes. Okay, so we'll just leave it because we're waiting for uh, the sage butter. But I want to show you how you know it's cooked, okay? Of course, you can see that it's, um, it's flaky, you see? Even the center part. Here, this is a thick one. Mm. I'm looking inside, and it's it's already opaque and flaky. So that means it's cooked. I don't know. Can you see? Yes, absolutely. It's okay. it's right. lovely. Yes, you're just about able to separate the the fish. Yes. So what we're going to do is we'll plate um, we'll plate this already because the sauce is going to be pretty much. Uh, ready to go now don't forget you don't want to leave food in a hot skillet 
especially especially if you're if you're afraid that it's going to overcook like in this case it could overcook so i'm going to put the i'm going to plate it and anything you're not using plate it as well or put in a container so that's what we're doing so we'll have i'll get a second plate actually So you guys are gonna have a yummy dinner. I'm hungry. So this is like perfect. Look at that. Oh. And you know, I like those little goopy things in the end, so I get them as much as possible. It's like the little reward, the brown bits. Okay. Oh, and don't forget to turn off your oven. Yes, I did. <laughs> now I just did. All right. Looks like our steak butter is actually perfect. And let me show you what that looks like. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in another camera because we are now beginning to plate anyway. So I'm just showing everyone that you're, you've, you've kept a low fire on the soup while you're doing all this plating. Yes, because I, all I'm doing is warming it. We are not cooking it. We are just warming. Now let me show you. Our sage butter on camera one. Can you see? Oh my. Okay, now that it's is very brown. Deeper amber than I earlier pointed out. That is yeah. lovely. Oh, because it cooked a lot faster. So now I'm gonna try, because the, 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 again, the, the skillet, this little skillet is still hot. I don't wanna overcook. I'm just gonna transfer it to a tempered container like this. Tempered meaning it can take heat. Whoa, can you hear that? Yes. You can hear the sizzle? And I can see you pulling away. <laughs> yeah, because it was sizzling. Ooh, that's beautiful. All right, so looks like the soup's ready too. So let's make sure our, our um, pecans. That's the other thing we're gonna need. Let me clear this station. So um, we are gonna top the we are gonna top the soup with pecan. So let me put you on prep one, just to make sure, let's see, there. Okay, all we're gonna do is, I've already pre-toasted this, let's, however much you want. And I'm just gonna roughly chop. And um, there oh, are two ways of toasting. You can either just put it in the oven I use an oven toaster that's front front loading, and depending on your oven size, you have to check this out for yourself. It'll take a few minutes to toast this, maybe five minutes. You can also dry toast in a skillet. Dry toasting means you're frying it without oil. That's all it is, but you wanna make sure to watch it because again, um, they, they, they are very quick to burn, and once it's burned, you don't like them because they become bitter. I'm gonna plate the soup, so. So you can see what that looks like. It's perfect timing, Marlene. We were, we're really at the limit here, so if everyone oh. can take another five minutes to get all their, their things done. Excellent. So we'll wrap up our session. Let me show you. Okay. I am going to put the pecans just like that. I'm going to show you also an overhead view. And then I'm going to drizzle with olive oil just lightly. The oil will float on the surface. So let me show you the view from this, the frontal. Oops. I like that frontal. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. The full so frontal. You can make a little design with your with your um, with your oil. Okay, so that's done. And then now let's uh, plate the rest of our fish, which means we turn off the steaming vegetables. Let's move it around. <laughs> let's see what this looks like. Ba -bam, ba -bam, bam bam There we go. Wow. All right, so let's get our tongs, put it here. 
so hefty. Now there are carrots below, don't forget that. Mm. Oh, it's steaming into my face, how nice. <laughs> I'm getting a facial at the same time. Yes, I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting a facial. Okay, back to frontal. Um, oh, sorry, so prep. <laughs> We're getting used to our, to our uh, camera. Not to worry. Your frontal still looks lovely. Thank you. Okay, <gasps> I'm going to dress the vegetables that with amazing. Drizzle, drizzling it with olive oil and just salt and pepper. Salt, pepper, and now for our sage sauce. And of course, you don't want to forget the beautiful sage. Marlene, pieces. it's breakfast time here, but you're making me incredibly hungry for dinner. Can you see how brown this is? It's lovely. Oh, and then remember those nice fried sage. Make sure everyone gets at least two. Maybe this will be mine, so I'll get three. Oh, God. Okay, that's done. And of course, hold on, you want to clean it? When you, when you present, you know, it's always nice when, when your plate looks clean and, and beautiful. So I'm, oops, I'm just gonna clean up a bit the sides and then serve it with a little bit of lemon. And ta-da! Shall we show the frontal? There is our dish. That's your sage cod, uh, sage cod butter, uh, steamed broccoli and carrots. And I showed you earlier your butternut squash soup. So I'm that's sure everyone can't dinner. wait to have to tuck into their dinner right now. Oops! Look at that. Straight into the sage. <laughs> that's actually my favorite thing. Whoa! So ah, you want to see how the whole thing looks? Let's let's show. It's always nice to show actually. We'll give you an overhead of uh, the whole meal. So let's go to stove top, just so you can see. Oops. Ta-da! There's your whole meal. Fantastic. Fantastic. All right. Hope, hope you guys enjoyed the class, and we hope to see you again next time. So thank you very much, Marlene. That was a lovely enjoyable hour of um, cooking with you for for any questions and um, uh, to our our chef Marlene over the next 24 hours please feel free to ask her any questions we have until 24 hours for you to to do a bit of Q&A and uh, don't forget please do take selfies or photos of your wonderful cooked meals tonight and post them on, on the, uh, and send it to us so we can post it on our website. Until next time, keep cooking. This is Home Chef Workshop. I'm Marilyn, and bye for now, Marlene and everyone. Bye, Marilyn. Bye, everyone. <laughs>